Recent DNA research on the Dead Sea Scrolls has revealed that not all of the ancient manuscripts came from the desert landscape where they were discovered. The study proves that the manuscripts did not actually come from the desert where they were found. So, the question is now, where did they come from? The Dead Sea Scrolls The Dead Sea Scrolls, 25,000 leather and papyrus fragments of biblical texts, which once made up a thousand manuscripts, are without doubt the most significant and exciting manuscript find of the last 100 years. The cache of scrolls and scroll fragments were discovered in 11 caves in the area of Qumran, 13 miles east of Jerusalem, close to the Dead Sea in Israel, the lowest place on earth. This extraordinary library of Jewish documents dates from between the 3rd century BC and AD 68, and consists of scrolls made from animal skins, parchment, a few of papyrus, and one extremely unusual example in copper. The texts are written using a carbon-based ink, mostly in Hebrew, with some in Aramaic, a Semitic language allegedly spoke by Jesus, and a small number in the Greek language. Research into these mysterious documents and their authors has been going on since their initial discovery in the late 40s, and has thrown some fascinating light, not only on the Bible, but also on a shadowy brotherhood of men and women known as the Essenes. Who wrote the scrolls? The question of who wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls and subsequently hid them away in the caves around Qumran is still to this day a controversial issue. Researchers have long debated the degree to which this library of manuscripts from the Qumran caves reflects the broad cultural setting of Second Temple Judaism, or whether it should be seen as a work of a radical sect discovered by chance. Biblical scholars have generally been in favour of the latter explanation and have christened the probable authors of the text a small Jewish group who lived at the nearby settlement of Qumran, the Dead Sea sect. The Dead Sea sect are often identified as the Essenes, credited with introducing monostasism and one of the three leading Jewish sects discussed by Jewish historian Josephus, 37 AD to 100 AD, the others being the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Essenes do appear in other contemporary sources, such as Josephus Flavius, Philo of Alexandria and Pliny the Elder, though they're not mentioned at all in the New Testament. Apparently, the Essenes left Jerusalem in protest at the way the Temple, the central institution of Judaism, and set themselves up in the Judean desert, away from what they saw as the worldliness of Jerusalem. They became an ascetic, monastic community, though there seems to have been women among them, and were strict observers of the Torah, or the written law, usually the first five books of the Hebrew Bible. There are some scholars who believe that the group were not responsible for the Dead Sea Scrolls at all. One theory is that the manuscripts were written by priests of Jerusalem's second Hebrew temple and then transported to Qumran and safely hidden away from the Roman legions. One interpretation of this hypothesis could involve the Dead Sea sect on one level, perhaps as those with the task of secreting the scrolls away from Jerusalem and depositing them in the caves. This would mean the sect were the keepers of the scrolls rather than their authors. However, this hypothesis does not tie in well with the sect's fierce criticism of the priesthood of the temple. Professor Norman Golb of the Oriental Institute of the University of Chicago believes that the scrolls represent such a wide range of ideas that rather being the product of one community, they likely represent the writings of various Jewish sects and communities of ancient Israel. Although all of the manuscripts discovered in Cave 1 appeared in print between 1950 and 1956, publication of the Dead Sea Scrolls has often been a slow process. This lack of access to the scroll material has persuaded some researchers such as Michael Bajans and Richard Lee in their book The Dead Sea Scrolls Deception that the Vatican was behind a plot to suppress the release of the manuscripts to the public out of fear of the dangerous material related to early Christianity they contained. Such theories have been considerably weakened by the release of more scroll material in the late 1990s and early 2000s, in particular, the publication of the entire collection of biblical scrolls. 
With the publication of much of the material from the caves at Qumran, the importance of the Dead Sea Scrolls can now be better appreciated. Not only do the scrolls provide fascinating religious and historical information about a poorly documented period of history, but they also shed considerable light on the sources of both Judaism and early Christianity. The DNA Analysis of the Scrolls In June 2020, a new controversy arose concerning the scrolls when it was announced in the press that a team of Israeli, Swedish and American researchers had applied advanced genetic testing to the parchment material on which they were written. Their sensational findings, published in the journal Cell, reveal that some of the material probably originated not from Qumran, but from other parts of the region. These results would suggest that the ideas contained in the documents also extended beyond the Qumran community. The team found that the vast majority of the scroll samples in the study were made from sheepskin. A few, however, were made from cowhide, which offers significant insights into the scroll's history. For example, researchers have long discussed whether three fragments of the book of Jeremiah had belonged to the same scroll. DNA analysis revealed that one fragment was made from cowskin and that the other two were made from sheepskin, so were not part of the same manuscript. This is a vital clue as cattle husbandry is almost impossible in the arid Judean desert surrounding Qumran, as cows require large amounts of grass and water. The analysis would indicate that the cow skin fragment, together with a separate cowhide piece of the same book, probably originated from outside the area. Lead researchers in the study were Oded Rachavi and Noam Misrahi, both biblical scholars at the Tel Aviv University. Misrahi confirmed that it was extremely significant that the two fragments written on cowskin represent two different versions of the book of Jeremiah. He added that analysis of the text found on these Jeremiah pieces suggests that they not only belong to different scrolls, but they also represent different versions of the prophetic book. The fact that the scrolls that are almost divergent textually are also made of different animal species is indicative that they originate at a different provenance. If these scrolls were brought from outside, it shows that Jewish society of the Second Temple period was not orthodox. They were open to the parallel existence of multiple versions of the very same divinely inspired text of the prophets. This evidence suggests that Judeans of the time were less concerned with the precise wording of ancient religious texts than later Jews and Christians. It also accords with the latest theory about the origin of the scrolls held by a number of scholars, that they were a collection of documents not local to Qumran, but largely written in Jerusalem and other places in Judea. Another discovery made during the analysis related to copies of a non-biblical text called the Songs of the Sabbath Sacrifice, a group of liturgical songs to be used on each of the first 13 Sabbaths of the year, dating by the solar calendar. It was already believed by many researchers that these texts did not appear to reflect practices particular to the Qumran community. The new genetic investigation revealed that this text, too, was circulating beyond the confines of Qumran. The research team also discovered during their analysis that all the sample scroll fragments written using a particular scribal system, characteristic to the sectarian writings found in the Qumran caves, are genetically linked. Significantly, these scroll fragments differ from others that were written in different ways, though discovered in the same caves. This discovery provides a new and powerful tool for distinguishing between scrolls peculiar to the sect and manuscripts that were brought from elsewhere and theoretically reflect the broader Jewish society of the period. The study also raised another fascinating question. This concerns a fragment containing text from the Book of Isaiah, which was previously published as a Qumran scroll. However, the team's DNA testing revealed that its genetic signature was different from other scrolls in Qumran, suggesting an origin outside the community. Mizrahi commented on this mystery. This raises a new curious question. Was this fragment really found in the Qumran caves, or was it originally found in yet another, still unidentified location? This is the nature of scientific research. We solve old puzzles, but then discover new mysteries. <laughs>